Hi everybody, Steve Tartar with another edition of Tartar Sauce here on Peoria Life, and we'll tell you where you can find it in a little bit. Um, with me today, I'm happy to have Sharon and John Amdahl, um, both former Caterpillar employees, executives, folks. Uh, but now I've gotten to know you, well, I knew John from Caterpillar because you were the technology head. We did some things there when I used to work at the Journal Star. And, but John and Sharon, you, you guys, I mean, I'm gonna let you take it from there, but I've come to know you as being all concerned in this community of Peoria, Peoria area. You live in Washington, yes. uh, but you've done things in the Heights and here and there. Um, what got you into this? Because we're gonna talk about retirement, but what have you, what, what came sort of through your guys' minds when you left Caterpillar to do? What was, what was the process there? Well, it starts with a fundamental decision that we were going to remain in the area. And which is going to be a center point of what we're going to talk about. Which is yep. the point we're going to talk right. about. But as a result of uh, stay, deciding we're going to stay in the area, we start looking at the area and saying, what does it have to offer? And as a result, we've gotten very involved with uh, lifelong learning at Bradley. We've gotten very involved with the arts community. We've, very, we've gotten involved with some of the local politic issues. Uh, we just... Uh, trying to be able to give back and become part of an active member of the community. And, I, and Sharon, I'll let you, 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 you add your own thoughts here, but I just know, and I'll just say this in passing, as a reporter, I'd go to meetings occasionally, and, and others would, and I would find these two at the back with their notes, ready to go to speak, uh, very informed, very helpful to the media, because you give us information that we need. Uh, Sharon, how do you look at what, what's transpired in your life? <laughs> Uh, as John said, the first uh, decision was whether we were going to stay here or leave, as so many other people have. And to be uh, frank, when we were working, we were pretty consumed by the jobs and didn't uh, spend a lot of time looking around for what, was, what there was to do here. And so we started that after we, and we don't call it retirement anymore. We call it, we stopped working for pay uh, <laughs> eight years ago for John and seven years for me. So we looked around and we were stunned and amazed by all that there is to do here. Uh, we still hear people say, well, there's nothing to do in Peoria. And we've learned that we cannot do all that there is to do. There's just too much. So, uh, and the, the arts, the culture, uh, any interest you have, perhaps maybe not scuba diving, but um, <laughs> uh, the, yeah, hiking, there's geological history here. There's, there's uh, all sorts of, of history. You've got the river, you've, you got the river, the river. you've got uh, sports, you've got nature. It's just amazing. Uh, the wide, uh, the, the large number of things um, to do here, but in addition to that, the wide variety of things to do here. And we discovered that there wasn't any reason to go anywhere else. And that's kind of brings us to, you know, the topic today, because if you know anything about John and Sharon, you know, they're organized and, you know, we could talk about any number of topics. You could talk about what you guys have done in the Heights and the arts. We could talk about Ollie. That's the uh, Osher lifelong learning at Bradley, which is so successful. We could talk about any number of things, but we decided to focus in on Peoria as a retirement destination, which some would say, oh, well, you know, the weather. You know, right away, people go to the Florida, and, and we'll always go to Florida or Arizona or somewhere warm uh, because they don't like winter. And, and we still have a winter, although that may be changing with, uh, <laughs> with all that's going on in the globe. Um, but, but Sharon, you alluded to it. With all the things here, we have the, the basis to make a real strong case to stay right here. Absolutely. And uh, without even trying, there's beginning to be some recognition outside this area. So, for example, Kiplinger's published mm -hmm. uh, an article about the top 50 places to retire in the U.S. And Peoria was number 14. Right. And they listed uh, one of the items was affordable housing. When you look at the median uh, house price for uh, th this area versus uh, the rest of the country. But beyond that, there is the, the re-energization 
re-energizing of the downtown, the warehouse district, the museum, and the park district were all mentioned by Kiplinger's on um, why this is a good place. And I'd like to add to that, no traffic jams. <laughs> yeah, we do have some traffic slowdowns when there's construction, but no traffic jams. And then you think about flying out of Peoria to versus what it's like to drive to Chicago and fly out of Chicago. The contrast is just amazing. And Go ahead, Joe. Well, so you did mention the weather. Uh, we actually have a pretty good solution for that, which is that uh, if it snows, we just don't go anywhere. <laughs> the nice thing about being retirement is you don't have that pesky day job that demands that you be there at a right. particular yeah. time and, and location. And so we've had some very enjoyable, spontaneous uh, days at home that have happened because of Mother Nature providing us a snow day. Yeah, take it take it as it comes, that sort of thing. Well, you mentioned a number of things, and, and I think they're all worth uh, you know expanding on. The traffic thing is, is just something I happened to notice a, um, an article, and these things come out on a regular basis, the traffic uh, situation in the country. And, and no surprises, San Francisco and, and L.A. And, and New York are right at, near the top of escalating time that people spend just locked up in traffic jams. Again, no surprise to anybody, even here in Peoria, because we, we take trips to Chicago and so forth, and you encounter that traffic that comes with the city. But, you know, you, you, you start wondering, is that the price you pay to do business? And others, yeah, we know there's people with good jobs that live in the city, and that's why they commute, and they've got a house in the suburbs, and they, they make that run. But you get stress on that level. You know, you're, you're having to fight that thing on a daily basis. You have to think about the traffic. In Peoria, you don't. You don't. I mean, I, yeah, I, we're not saying the roads are perfect, or there's no, not need to potholes and bridges and all that. But... You don't have that daily sort of grind, oh, I can't go this way, I have to go that way because of the problems. Exactly. Right. Uh, another thing that was important to us as we stopped working for pay and started looking around in the community is uh, ways to keep our brains sharp. I think anyone who starts reaching these ages uh, becomes a little concerned about uh, keeping your, your mind sharp. And uh, so there's um, two aspects to that. Uh, I read a lot. Oops. <laughs> and, sorry, let me just. High tech. No, that's fine. Um, and so what is the current research saying about um, uh Alzheimer's, dementia, preventing that, uh, staying sharp as you age, uh, and learning new things mm -hmm. is turning into being even more important than some of the brain exercises uh, that people have done in past years. And we have a lifelong learning program in Peoria. Uh, it's called Osher Lifelong Learning Institute Otherwise and known as Ollie. All, otherwise known as Ollie, uh, O L L I, and it's at Bradley University. And uh, it is generally acknowledged to be one of the best in the country. There are 123 um, Ollies around the country, uh, each one uh, hosted or sponsored by a local university. And this is a wonderful opportunity for learning. In addition to that, we, like anyone our age, has developed skills and capabilities over the years. And the only way to keep those alive is to use them. And so we can volunteer at OLLI because it's a completely volunteer-driven program. And then we can also look around in the community to see if there's ways that we can use these skills we've developed uh, to give back. The, the community is small enough. Uh, I tell people that are new to this area that this is a small town that has a lot of people in it. <laughs> but the community is small enough that... Small town with a lot you, of people in it. I remember that. You can have... Um, you, you can get engaged where you want to, whether it's not-for-profits 
or uh, in your local community um, government or other organizations and give back with the skills you've accumulated over a, a lifetime. Well, and, and I'll let John uh, talk to that point too, but I, I, I have a perfect example of what you're talking about, and that's the Apollo Theater, uh, which is just down the street from us here in downtown Peoria. And by the way, we're talking with John and, and Sharon Amdahl um, and about Peoria's a retirement center, and, and if you uh, wanted to catch past this, uh, this podcast or others, Facebook, YouTube, and Peoria TV, Peoria-TV, are places you can find it. But I was going to say the Apollo Theater, um, I happened to do a story one time on the theater. It's, it's, for those that know it, it closed in 58 as a regular theater and then lost, they destroyed the theater itself when they put it in a parking deck. All that remained was the uh, balcony. And uh, the, the lighters, uh, the, the, the people that, that own the building, uh, restored it in about 1990, and there it sat, and they did shows there, and they had a very nice little entertainment center. Well, I came along and did a story one time on that, and the guy was saying, well, you know, I said, why don't you have more like old movies in there, you know, because it would be a nice little venue. He said, well, do you want to do it? And the next thing you know, I did it for like eight or nine years with others, uh, not myself entirely, but I mean, the point is, you can do things like that in, in, a, in a community, as you say, a small town with a lot of people, um, which I'm going to use, by the way, sometime. I will credit you, Sharon. But, uh, but that, I think that's the beauty. I mean, it's like, John, I want you to, to give your thoughts on this. But, I mean, we know what the big cities have, a lot of stuff. Chicago, I mean, you guys, Ollie groups go up there, and they see all these wonderful things. So there's not, this is not a competition where we're saying this is better than that. There's assets everywhere. The point is, look at the assets here. John, what do you think? Absolutely, and there is just an amazing amount of assets, and like Sharon said, in, in absolutely any way that you want to look at it. Uh, but maybe shift topics a little bit. You mm -hmm. know, as people make the big exit out of Peoria, right. you, uh, we generally ask them, so why are you doing that? And number one on their list usually is property taxes. Mm -hmm. And they do have a point. Property taxes in Illinois are high. Sure. But we challenge people to look at the entire picture because uh, Illinois actually has very low fees, things like uh, your $100, $104 for registering your car is actually very low compared to other states. Uh, we actually have uh, no income tax on retirement income in Illinois. Hopefully that, that may, continues. That change. <laughs> you and yes, I both probably yeah. care about that. Yeah, we, we're worried about that. <laughs> we do worry about that, but, but at this point in time, it, it doesn't. And it's interesting to hear people that have moved to other states and suddenly complaining about some of these other taxes that in fact are high in, in other states. And, and so people need to look at the entire picture. And at the end of the day, governments have got to support the services that they provide. And it probably comes out pretty close to the same in other locations compared to where we are here in Peoria. I'm thinking as you're talking of a, a party, I guess it was a party, a group of people gathered together uh, back in the 70s. And it's Sausalito, California. And we're all sitting on the floor and you're hearing voices everywhere. And I, I don't know who I was talking to at the time, but I heard another conversation. I've always retained this. The guy was talking to somebody and said, I don't live anywhere because of the sunsets. And I think it, it stuck with me because when we go on vacation or we go somewhere beautiful, uh, we think, oh, what would it be like to live in Hawaii? What would it be like to live in Tahiti or whatever it is? And well, while that's nice and some people are able to do that, um, that's not really... That's not really for most of us, whatever, for whatever reason. And I think, as John said, you know, you're going to pay taxes no matter where you go. <laughs> so, and, and, and somebody could say, well, you know, I love these lists. And you mentioned Kiplinger and there's so many others. I, I love lists, but sometimes those city lists bother me because I always think about the criteria, like right. best places to live. Right. Well, who says so? You know yeah. what I mean? And, you know, yeah, so it, there's always a subjective quality. But I think, you know, we have to recognize that Peoria and other cities like Peoria, because I'm, I'm sure we're not alone in this, but since we're here and talking about it and you guys have the experience on it, um, you need to explore a little bit yes. in your community yes. before you say, oh, we're running out of here. Right. Because as you said, Sharon, you find out there's a lot to do here. And you know, I'm not a huge, uh, Paul Gordon, who used to be my business editor, was very heavily involved, is very heavily involved in Cornstock Theater. And would always be asking me, hey, I'm going to be in the show, I'm directing the show. Well, I never, got, I never went. And I'm sorry, Paul. But I mean, <laughs> for whatever reason. And, and, you know, but the point is, that's there for those that want to go. 
and, and want to participate, want to act, want to direct, want to do the lights and the sound. Yep. So you know, it's it's really engagement. You know, yeah. that you you're asking people to, to take on. And yeah. There's, and there's also an aspect of this that would for our community leaders. I think that some may have a, a mental image of retirees as you stop working, you sit in a rocking chair on a porch, and uh, then you you just fade away. And these days, retirees are a tremendous source of benefit to the region. Mm -hmm. uh, I just saw an article that uh, baby boomers, which is what we're talking about right now, control 82% of the financial affairs in America. And so you keep them in your community and they're going to invest these things, they're going to uh, support consumer spending, they're going to support your medical community, support your housing market. Um, and so the retirees can be a tremendous economic benefit. Well, that's, that's a pet peeve of mine too, what you just said there, because with that huge uh, involvement in the financial side, the baby boomers, I don't think we get enough, uh, we, I, I'm part of that, I turned 70 later this month, um, that the, the music, the, 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 the things I read sometimes are all geared for, and I understand, you know, there's a sense of whatever that magic demographic is that, that Madison Avenue has long sought. Mm -hmm. Family, I understand a family. Or if you're selling beer, you want to sell it to people who drink a lot of beer. Right. Okay, so that's usually younger people. I'm not too young, but but you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. And so I understand all that. But you get to a certain point where who's taking the trips? Who's buying the cars? Who's listening to Tony Bennett or whatever it is? That's us. And, and we're not getting credit. And right. who's volunteering yes. in the community? Who's Who at the hospital? The who's this? Yes. Yes. Right. Who's taking you? You know, So I think that needs to be understood by everybody, not just um, the folks that are thinking about retirement or, or yeah. leaving a workplace. And we just got a couple minutes to go here, but maybe you know, one of the closing thoughts is it'd be really great if there was actually a formal study done around this. So, mm. you know, how much money really leaves the community every time a family decides to move out of the area in retirement? That's uh, good. What could be the economic benefit if you were able to attract those people, keep those people in town, uh, be able to uh, uh, have that as a, perhaps as big an economic development opportunity as attracting that other business that we spend all of our time trying to attract? Yeah. And one of our other uh, missions is to try to promote Peoria as an arts destination. Right. And the arts are a legitimate business. We think we got what it takes. And again, it's a matter of how do you pull all that story together, package that story in a way that it becomes sellable to other people, becomes something that you can convince others of, something that our city leaders talk about on a frequent basis, mm -hmm. something that is part of the dialogue of who we are, what we are. We think there's a story there, we think there's an opportunity there, we really think that um, it's a unmet opportunity for the region to really promote Peoria as a retirement that's, destination. That's a great idea. I mean, that's something that I can see uh, helping everybody because, again, we're not just talking about baby boomers, you know, folks that may be doing what we're all doing here. We're talking about the whole community because the benefits would be so great for everybody. If you had, you know, people staying in the area, as you said, not leaving because of I'm going, you know, permanently away and taking that spending power with them. Right. You know, exactly. Right. I mean, the car dealers probably are thinking, hey, we, we want to be a part of that. So anyway, well, OK, we are running out of time. And this is, you know, there's a whole list here. And I think, you know, what we'll do, um, we'll get this out on, on the uh, tartar sauce uh, podcast. You know, I'll do a formal thing. Uh, for those that don't know it, I, I tend to write a lot and uh, <laughs> or, or I, I, I write sort of in spurts. And uh, we'll get this out, and we'll credit you folks for providing this because I think it's so great. And I'm so great we had a, a chance to get back together on a podcast because we used to do it at the Journal Star, and now we're here. Um, I'm going to invite both of you back because I'm sure it'll be a different topic. Right. I'm sure it'll be okay. something right. that we can re-explore or maybe revisit this one. We'll see. But anyway, right. John and Sharon Amdahl, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. We'll see you next time on Tartar Sauce. PeoriaLife.com